Hello, welcome back to coverage here at Grand Prix Los Angeles. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe in the booth with Paul Rietzel. And it's time for the finals. We've got Logan Nettles and Ben Friedman facing off against each other. And it looks like we're already underway. Logan Nettles kick th kicks things off with Scrap Heap Scrounger on turn two. That is what he wants to be doing. Ben Friedman. Well, he's got a swamp. <laughs> he's got a swamp. Scrap Heap Scrounger, we talked about it. The best card in standard. Absolutely brutal. Could be a problem for Ben as well. He does have four copies of Vraska's Contempt in his deck, but... Vraska's Contempt and two copies of the Hostage Taker. The Scarab God is something that matches up pretty well, but the rest of his deck, you know, pretty poorly aligned. I do like the innovation of three main deck Doom Falls in Ben Friedman's deck. Not something we often see um, used in these blue-black decks, but since he's trying to play at sorcery speed largely anyway, a nice inclusion. Yeah, and boy, that could come in very handy here as look at the way things have curved out, especially... If you can find one here to get rid of one of these scrap heap scroungers permanently. No, Ooh. he doesn't even hit his third land, Paul. Oh, you see that? He says, shucks, I missed my land drop. Yeah. But he may be, you know, kind of having some fun with Logan, but he's, that is a major misstep for Ben Friedman. As we've seen, this blood, uh, red black deck is unrelenting <laughs> with the threats. Now, he does have to burn. A fatal push here just to keep his life total up. And he has yet to take even a single hit. And he had copies of Doom Fall, you know, available. So had oh, he found that them. third land, he had actually the, 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 the answer sequence pretty well. But now look at this. He's invested two cards to kill those Scrap Heap Scroungers. One of them could come back right away, or both of them threaten eventually to, to return to the battlefield. So advantage Logan Nettles. This is actually not a particularly great play here from Nettles, right? He plays a Goblin Chain Whirler, it's fine, although Ben Friedman missing another land drop. But that was a turn where he could go land Chandra or play a Phoenix or something great. And instead it's just a 3-3. Three, three. There's a Bomat Courier though for Logan Nettles and he does find his fourth mana as well. All right, now the damage is going to start flowing unless Ben Friedman can find a land in the next turn or two. This one could have slipped away from him just that quickly. Mm. Yeah, it's do that's it. It's over. Wow, Logan Nettles takes a blisteringly fast game one from Ben Friedman. He misses a couple of land drops, and they're having some fun joking around, but ouch. Yeah, that's really Terrible tough. Terrible start. And, and now you're going to have to find <laughs> Ben Friedman's backs against the wall here. He needs to try to win two games against the best deck in the format and a matchup that probably his deck does not want to face. He, he wants to prey on those Teferi decks that we've been seeing, the kind of cute decks and, and the green decks. That's where, where blue-black mid-range shines. Black-red aggro you have to get a little bit lucky to beat. Certainly missing a third land drop, not the way you want to go. Yeah, he doesn't even get to have the luxury of playing against, like, maybe somebody he doesn't know, thinking, how good can this guy really be? <laughs> he knows yeah. darn well that Logan Nettles is a, uh, a top-class player and that he's not going to make it easy for him. All right, we're going to do a quick commentator change here. Uh, I'm sticking with you, but Paul Rietzel actually had to step out because he's going to miss his flight. <laughs> this one went a little bit later. So we're going to welcome back Jake Van Lunen to the booth. Jake, welcome back, buddy. Thanks. Thanks for having me here. Nice to see you. Yeah. And uh, boy, did you blink, Jake, because you missed game number one. If you did, uh, a couple of missed land drops from Ben Friedman, and that was all she wrote. Yeah, uh, we talked about it the last round, and uh, Red Black Aggro, when the opponent stumbles on their mana, it does a very good job of punishing them for it. Good to see Logan smiling there. Happy about uh, that easy game one victory. Yeah, it was kind of interesting spot too because Logan attacked for four damage, knocking Ben down to 16. Ben drew his card and saw that he was gonna miss his third land drop yet again and he just packed it in. He was done. Oh, so. He understood the writing on the wall. I suppose so, yeah. <laughs> this weekend's been pretty exciting. Uh, Standard looks a lot more diverse than a lot of people expected it to. Yeah, our top eight ended up being pretty diverse as well. There were two copies of red slash red black aggro, but the rest was all spread out. Yeah. Two different flavors of blue white. We saw the Turbo Fog deck that we saw Eric Froelich play uh, in, uh, all the way to the semifinals. It was some good stuff. Yeah, uh, some really exciting stuff from the semifinals. I'm not sure if you got to see, but Eric Froelich essentially got to uh, enact the, the turn four kill, if you will, 
turn three, uh, Gift of Paradise into turn four to ferry untap lands, have fog up, and then uh, next turn start chaining Nexus of Fates. Really exciting. Yeah, Eric really showed off the power level of that deck throughout the course of the weekend. We were talking a little bit earlier about Logan Nettles. Uh, somewhat unknown, you know, to the average Magic viewer because we don't actually see him out at the live tournaments that often. But when we do, I, I always take a moment to, to point him out because I think he's kind of one of the low-key, very good players in the world. And yeah, Jabberwocky, yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he's the type of player that I believe if, if he, you know, decided, you know, I'm going to do this magic travel and all that stuff thing, we would see him all the time. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. he is uh, clearly just a master of this game. By the way, we might be getting him, too. He's, he's cute for two Pro Tours in a row now. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh. Reeling yeah. him in. Yeah, he uh, he top for a Team GP out here not too long ago, right? And he's uh, he got to play in the Pro Tour, uh, the last one. So, yeah, he's he might be running it up. You know, a couple of good finishes for him, and we might be seeing his face out quite a bit more often. And, and that's a good thing. He's also a, a super nice guy. Absolutely. I've enjoyed every interaction I've had with him, yeah. except all of the tickets I've lost him on Magic Online, of course. Right, and I didn't enjoy it when he scored like a bunch of buckets when he came out and played basketball in Vegas for one of the GPs. Oh, did he? Did not enjoy oh. that. Oh, great, he knows great, how to ball? Great mid-range jumper on that guy. Ooh. Really annoying. Yeah. Now I want to hang out with him more. Yeah, yeah. He can <laughs> ball too. Yeah, he lives in this area down here in California, and... Hence, we see him out at the GP. Normally, you won't see uh, Logan at a GP. He's a little bit more of a homebody, prefers to, to not travel so much. But again, you know, incentives speak. And uh, maybe if he can put together a really good pro season, we can uh, have him kind of parlay uh, the success that he's had thus far into uh, even more. We, you know, once very famously saw his cousin Reed Duke have a similar step up where he won the Magic Online Championship and parlayed that into, well, he now he's just Reed Duke. Yeah, now he's, uh, you know, one of the very best in the world. He really is. Uh, yeah. I know. It's not, it's yeah. not even a question anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I was actually looking over some stats. Uh, of course, uh, for those of you that don't know, it is Hall of Fame season. Everybody that has Twitter and follows anybody on Magic knows that it's Hall of Fame season. But if you don't, uh, you know, once a year, we get to do a vote and vote uh, players into the Hall of Fame who are eligible. And uh, the ballots went out recently, so that always sparks a lot of conversation about who we should vote for, who we shouldn't vote for, and all the fun controversies and dramas surrounding that. Um, but I've seen uh, people, s some of our more gifted uh, players will actually make spreadsheets and, and kind of produce reports that dive a little deeper into the data than just, this player has four top eights. Mm -hmm. This player has, the, you know, they'll go top 16s, top 32s, top 64s, medians, three-year mean. You know, we go deep, you know, on the numbers. And, boy, I've seen some of the numbers on Reed. And he's in some elite company uh, with some of his performances uh, during his career at the Pro Tour that I was like, wow. You know, some extremely impressive consistency numbers from him. Yeah, the Finkel-like numbers almost over the course of his Pro Tour career. Just to be clear, Reed is not currently on the ballot. Oh, yeah, it's, it's still a few years but for him, right? still, yeah, but the names pop up here and there, and you kind of go, whoa. Yeah, I think this is uh, Brad Nelson's first year on the ballot. I was really surprised by his median finish. Mm. That was really impressive Was it me. really high? Yeah, I think okay. it was the, perhaps the, the highest on the list. Oh, boy. It is always interesting around Hall of Fame time because everybody that has – a vote, and even people that don't. Uh, everybody values different things differently. And mm -hmm. the way that Hall of Fames work in general, not just the magic one, is that you're not given a specific criteria on which to judge people. You you can choose yourself as long as they're eligible, me and they meaning that they've met the requirements to be eligible, which in our case is you know, 150 pro points in your lifetime. You have to have played for 10 years since your first professional level event, et cetera, or your first pro tour. Um, you know, when when you've met that threshold, you, you can vote for whatever reason you want, and they give you some loose criteria like sustained excellence and community contributions and stuff, but it's all super vague, and it basically just says, look, you decide what you think, wh who the, the type of person is should be honored you know, for that type of thing. But that's, of course, 
where the crux of all the discussions come in because everybody's, yeah. you know, and I think you need to have at least four pro tour top eights and a win and other people are like, look, this person was instrumental in their region. I don't care that they only have two pro tour <laughs> top eights. And you it's very that subjective. Thing. Yeah. One of my favorite parts of this weekend was actually uh, Mark Herbaholtz. He's on the ballot. PTQ. Yeah, I voted for him last year. Well, you should vote for him again then because he won a PTQ <laughs> and he might be making a big comeback. All right, we're underway here in game number two. Bit of a long uh, sideboard session there between the two, but they're rack back and ready to rumble and a perfect start here for Ben Friedman. He gets to kick things off with really his best two mana play, the Glint Sleeve Siphoner. Uh, Logan Nettles, the rest. Only one target, so Ben Friedman saves him the trouble of having to read it and just throws the Vraska's Contempt in the graveyard for him. Yeah, leaves his hand face up for a little while longer so Logan can write down the cards there. The Glint Sleeve Siphoner from Ben Friedman here, much better on the play than it is on the draw. This means that Ben will be able to get that trigger at least once before Logan has access to Goblin Chain Whirler mana. That's right, and this is a really important thing because of that Ether Hub, right? You know, he, he was able to kind of cheat the system there. You know, the way it's supposed to work, air quotes, is you play the Siphoner, you get a mana, you attack with it, you get a mana, then that next turn you finally get the card out of the deal. But he was able to shortcut that, and there it is, Chain Whirler, but boom, Ben Friedman, very much prepared for that with Essence Scatter. That maintains that Siphoner. He's back up to two energy here, and next turn he could be drawing an extra card. And you know, he's kind of pl playing Protect the Queen here, right? He's like, I've got this card draw engine and, and damage spell, and I'm just going to leave up mana now. Yeah, at this point, Ben Friedman, uh, he's pulling really far ahead, and Logan Nettles might be incentivized to actually use a removal spell on that Glint Sleeve Siphoner before it's able to draw another card. And when you're playing red-black aggro, you really don't want to be using your removal spells in a matchup like this until you already have some pressure on the board. Well, let's see what Logan wants to do this turn. He, he will have access to four mana thanks to that Ether Hub. Oh, he's got to make sure that he uh, gets that energy trigger there. Maybe he just was asking for a die. Okay, cool, we got it. And there is another Goblin Chain Whirler, and this time, Ben Friedman did not have a counter spell for it. It does feel like he's got a removal spell in his hand, and in fact, I do see that uh, Vraska's Contempt that we saw before. So he was deciding whether he wanted to use that or not. He decides, yes, I do need to use it, but the key part of that interaction, that's a two-for-one for Logan Nettles. He got to take out the Glint Sleeve Siphoner for air quotes free. Absolutely, and that's one of the reasons why Goblin Chain Whirler is just one of the very best cards in Standard right now. It's because this super powerful card, Glint Sleeve Siphoner, the best two drop in Standard, matches up so poorly against it. All right, and here it is. Empty mana. An empty board, I should say, and it's Sensor. Does he have a, an answer? No, it's Chandra Torch of Defiance for Logan Edel's definitely playing a land first to make sure he didn't get blown out by Sensor. And now... He has that position that these decks love to be in, a Planeswalker on an empty board. Yeah, and uh, that was absolutely beautiful from Logan Nettles. Two turns in a row where he had just one extra mana on the battlefield. Ben Friedman with that sensor in his hand, uh, looking at it, forced to cycle it, understanding that Logan Nettles is not going to be walking into that one. Yeah, I'm sure Ben got a lot of value from playing sensor. It's a card that you don't see all the time now. But uh, not against Nettles. And Nettles is now out of gas. He just got the last spell, Doomfall, from his hand. And his, and his hand now consists of land, land. But he's got a draw step and a Chandra activation incoming. Yeah, and this Chandra can take care of the Glint Sleep Siphoner. And then Logan Nettles really wants to draw a threat off the top of his library so that he can start applying pressure and combine that with the Planeswalker he has on the board. You know what I'm thinking, buddy? The Scarab God. <laughs> That can end this game in short order if Ben's right. able to draw it. Yeah, he does have a Torrential Gear Hulk in his hand, but uh, he's on five mana currently. So bzz, down goes the Glint Sleeve Siphoner. Oh, did Logan find something else? Oh, hello. Yeah, that's a threat. It may not be one of the big mana threats, but uh, it's a pretty nice one. It provides multiple bodies to attack with. Uh, if Ben finds another land, though, uh, Hostage Taker could be an excellent play to take that car he's having cast it right away but so far nothing here for ben land first then reveal oh doomfall that can take care of the uh the torrential gear hulk at the minimum but he also has other options here the hostage taker you, you mentioned before and essence extraction 
is the hand for Friedman. So it looks like Friedman hoping to draw a land there to cast the Costas Shaker and just steal Carrie's Ev and cast her. But if he doesn't have that option, he could just cast Essence Extraction instead. Yeah, leaves himself with uh, multiple angles here. Yeah. Not sure how concerned he is about leaving Karyzev on the battlefield at the moment, but I guess we have evidence that he doesn't mind because <laughs> he just took it. <laughs> Ragavan and company coming into the red zone, knocking Ben Friedman down to 15. Yeah, we still know what Logan's draw step was for this turn. Uh, I mean, if it was something like a rekindling Phoenix, then he'd be putting Ben in a super awkward place and would be putting himself in position to become the champion of Grand Prix Los Angeles, defending his home turf here. That's right. He's up one game to zero, and he's certainly ahead in this game at the moment, though that can fall apart because Friedman's deck is very powerful, and Logan still has perfect information about what Friedman's doing. Friedman really not wanting to, uh, to risk the, uh, the hostage taker here. Plus again, get rid of a mountain, drop you down to 13. Did he find a rekindling phoenix for with his draw step, though? I'm not sure. I haven't seen yet. Who's curious? I know I am. I want to know so bad. Yeah, I think he did. <laughs> did he? Yeah, there it is. Oh, this guy. The big bird. <laughs> and now we're going to see kind of a cool play here from Friedman. He's going to use Essence Extraction to kill the phoenix. And then he's probably just going to cast that hostage taker to take care of the elemental token, which means the phoenix is actually going to stay gone. Yeah, really nice sequencing there from Ben. You know, good, good patience from him. Yeah, you don't get full value out of your hostage taker. No. But you feel you like do. it. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, killing a rekindling phoenix is not easy for these decks to do without Frasca's Contempt. Ben's hand has been torn apart this game. He's been under the pressure of the Chantra Torch of Defiance. Oh, trigger on the stack. He's going to use a braid. Wow. And now Ben in a really, really rough spot. Yeah, this one has really slipped away now. The timely a braid there from Logan Nettles has primed him for victory. He gets to keep ticking Chandra upwards. That's another thing that Ben Friedman has to worry about is Chandra's uh, accumulated damage and then even a potential ultimate, though that's probably not going to come into play here because Logan Nettles is pounding on tons of damage. And look at Ben Friedman's life total. He's down to six. Yeah, and the, the blue-black mid-range deck, it does not play anything like Bantu's Last Reckoning. So it's looking like I'm, n I'm not even sure if there's I a think, card I think we're done deck. here. Yeah. I, I, and that's going to do it. Logan Nettles is your GP Los Angeles champion protecting the home turf and taking the 10,000 bucks and the trophy home. Congratulations to him. Ben Friedman has that look on his face like, boy, I didn't draw very well, did I? <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't. Another fantastic finish from Friedman, though. He has really been knocking at the door consistently for quite a while, uh, really looking to break through and get to that big platinum status and kind of you know up himself once more. He's been on the ladder in the gold range for a long time now, but I've always been impressed uh, by him. But it is gonna be Logan Nettles, Jabberwocky. He is local here to the Los Angeles area, and he decided to stroll over and try out a GP, and boy, did that work out well for him. Yeah, no surprise to me. I lose to him all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And again, you know, I mentioned it before, but for those of you that aren't familiar with Logan, he's Jabberwocky on Magic Online, and he's really well known for tuning decks, right? You know, when mm -hmm. you get deep into a standard season, you will often see even the highest level professional players. I mean, Paul said he does this. Uh, look to what, you know, hey, there's a 5-0 league deck from Jabberwocky. What is he up to? Yeah, and whenever I see a 5-0 list from him, regardless of constructed format, I put it together myself and start playing with it because if he's up to something and winning with it, then that's what I want to be up to. Yeah, and that says a lot. All right, we've got Logan down in the feature match area for our interview. Let's say hi to him right now. Hey, Logan, congratulations. Marshall with JVL in the booth here. You just won your home GP. What's going through your mind right now, buddy? Uh, I mean, it feels great. Um, <laughs> It's it's a lot more laid back in these top eights than I thought. Like, you know, I was before it started, I was like really anxious and nervous and, you know, confident, but still stressing about it. And then, you know, you're just playing magic and uh, like 
I get a lot of nerves and you know feel intense and stuff but mm -hmm. but it's just about playing games of magic and you know the, those kinds of feelings don't affect your your uh, ability to think you know mm -hmm. use your intellect well so like yeah I mean I, I guess I'm just I'm blown away that I won it like it's crazy I don't even I can't believe it. Yeah, and you, know, <laughs> you also had a pretty experienced top eight here. I, that probably also lended to the laid back nature of it. A lot of the players in your top eight here had, have already had either one or even multiple top eights in their career. So, you know, you can kind of just slide in with them and, and, and ride the wave, as it were. Yeah, it's cool. Um, I'm, I'm kind of friends with Ben and Efro. Uh, me and Ben randomly stayed at the same place in uh, Minneapolis, so we kind of hung out at night, and um, he's funny. It, it was great to play them. Uh, I was. It's funny because I, I noted like I, was sure to be prepared for fog. So, uh, I mean, apparently people are moving away from insult and more towards spyglass, but I'm still a fan of insult. And then I didn't play it in the entire tournament, and I played green a bunch of times, and then, you know, but against. Against Efro, like I was glad I had it, but it, I mean I didn't draw it anyways. But uh, yeah, I mean it was great experience. Like top eight was awesome. It yeah. was cool that there were some superstars, and yeah, I'm just stoked. It was, was kind of cool that you won too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that part was crazy. Bad. How much did you tune this deck? I mean, you have a very strong reputation in the professional magic community for being a great deck tuner. Whenever you 5 a league, the pros come like wolves to see what it is that you're doing and what you're dealing with. How much time did you put in on this uh, red black deck that you won the tournament with? Oh my gosh, like so much time. You you went you honestly wouldn't believe. Like I feel like I've probably played more games with red black chain whirly than anyone else on the earth. Um, I, I believe you. I've played yeah. versions with four Soul Scar, zero Soul Scar, four Bowmat, zero Bowmat, Kenra. I've played all different numbers of Phoenixes, all different numbers of Chandras, zero unlicensed, like j basically anything. I've played, I tried Karn a bunch. Um, but like, and I had like streaks of great success trying those different things. Mm -hmm. But. In the end, like, this is kind of, at least for me, it's kind of the stock list. And it's exactly what I played at the PT, um, mm -hmm. except for the two insults on the board. That was the one swap. But, uh, yeah, like, I am not confident in saying that my exact list is the optimal red-black chain whirler because things are always shifting. Um, like, I have three Chandras and two phoenixes and uh -huh. you know that like little things like that are different based on the percentages of what decks are in the metagame so it's like it's basically impossible to have a, a perfect list you know so sure this is what i'm comfortable with and it's just an insane deck like the cards are so good and there's no reason not to play it uh, at least for me like so I'll tell you what you should start metagaming against your own list because once we publish this thing you're going to be facing it a lot on Magic Online I'll tell you that hey one more question before we let you go Logan you know we don't see you out at every tournament you're not the one that's you know jet setting around the world playing all these tournaments but you qualified for another pro tour with this top eight are we going to be seeing more of you yeah. Um, yeah, we're getting them. I knew it. We're I mean, reeling them in slow. <laughs> the the grind gets me, you know, like yeah. I really love good results and, you know, the excitement of winning. But the traveling and the, you know, hanging around, like I'm good at, at conversating and, and being with people. But, you know, the truth is, like, I feel like I'm an introvert, you know. I kind of prefer to just wander off and kind of sit by myself. And these days are long, so, like, yep. I, uh... They drain your battery, don't but they? But it's, like, it's exactly <laughs> what everyone says, you know. Like, you get hooked and, <laughs> you know, you win and then you're incentivized to keep going, so... Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll be around. You'll see me. All right, man. I'm glad to hear it. And once again, Logan, congratulations. Great job winning Grand Prix Los Angeles. Thank you, guys. Yep. So awesome stuff. You can obviously get a feel for Logan there. He's a super chill guy, really nice. I've had a chance to hang out with him a couple of times now, and he's always just like that. 
real laid back, and somebody I personally hope we see a lot more of out at the Pro Magic scene. Absolutely, I cannot agree more, and I cannot be happier that the winner of the Grand Prix is the person who has played the most games, possibly in the world. Justice! With what is considered the best deck and standard. Yeah. It's exactly how everything is supposed to be. It's all in its right place. All is right with the world here in Los Angeles, but of course, it is time for us to say goodbye. Thank you so much for joining us for coverage here of Standard. We really enjoyed your company, and we're really glad that you decided to spend some time with us. Also, I got to thank Channel Fireball Events for putting the thing on, and also the judges and staff to help make these things possible. If you've ever been in one of these tournaments, you know that they do not run without the judges and staff. So thank you so much for everybody that made it happen. And, of course, for Paul Rietzel, for this guy right here, for TJ Rogers, I'm Marshall Suckov saying we'll see you guys next time.